Good morning, influencers. That's right. We're going to be talking about guaranteed YouTube views and the best tool to do that. My name is Benji Travis and welcome to Video Influencers. We're going live today to talk about guaranteed YouTube views. We're going to be deep diving into this amazing tool called vidIQ. A lot of you know that um, about that tool, that it is an amazing tool. We're going to be going into some advanced things that the tool has available to you. And we have a special guest that's going to be educating us on that. But if you're new here, consider subscribing. We're helping you build your influence, impact, uh, influence income, and impact with online videos. Hit that like button and leave a question below because we're going to be answering all of them um, at the very end couple things here what we're gonna be teaching today specifically the three simple steps for guaranteed views two we're gonna be deep diving into vidIQ and three really exciting something that a lot of people have been asking for we're gonna be teaching how to audit your channel specifically we'll be picking two channels to do that so me and our special guest will be uh, picking two channels. I think that will prioritize uh, the super chats. But uh, you guys, I just want to say hello to everybody watching. I'm excited to get right into this. So let's get started. This video is brought to you by vidIQ, the number one Chrome extension for YouTubers looking for on-point data analysis, research resources, and enhanced video creator tools. Start getting more views in less time today by signing up for free at vidIQ.com slash influence. That's vidIQ.com slash influence. Woo! I am so excited. Are you excited? Let me know. I'm actually looking at all the chats right now. Life of Amy, Gypsy, uh, Liddy, and Kay, Ivana. Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you're watching from. I'm so excited to dive into this topic because who wouldn't want to guarantee views? Now, there's a lot that we have to uh, disclose about that. You know. Uh, these guaranteed views, you have to do everything we're talking about. And you have to use a tool that we're going to be sharing, vidIQ, in the way that we're coaching you on. If you don't do that, you're not going to get the views, okay? But I can tell you after 10 years of doing this, this process, this tool, and combining all the different tips and strategies will get you views. It's that simple. YouTube is not that hard to figure out. But without further ado, I want to introduce you to our special guest. His name is Rob Wilson. He's a video creator at vidIQ. Yes, they have a YouTube channel, so make sure you guys go subscribe. We have a link down below if you want to check it out. Amazing content. But Rob Wilson is probably one of the, the, uh, the best experts when it comes to strategy tactics and optimizing your videos he's here to say hi and share with us his knowledge what's up rob good morning good afternoon good evening everybody thank you uh, benji for inviting me into the video influencers community and i just wanted to make sure everybody i am representing yeah. here we've got the book here at vidIQ uh, and so yeah awesome to see everybody joining here colors of life life of amy sam's tech productions everybody joining us here for some hopefully guaranteed views <laughs> for your channel now, I know it's a bold statement, um, and we're going to dive right into that and explain what we mean. But you guys, YouTube secrets, like Rob mentioned, exciting news. The audio book is finally out. I know that about 15% uh, of you, if not everybody, wants the audio book version. So make sure you check it out on Amazon. We'll put it in the links below. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first part of the three simple step strategy um, to get guaranteed views is this gotta research before you record now this is something we've talked about a lot but I can tell you I just recently uh, coached a whole bunch of people on how to build their YouTube channel get views sparks family thank you for the super chat and it was amazing how just this one tip 
was like the game changer for them because most people when they create videos they just think about ideas um, they get creative and they're like I'm gonna make a video on this they upload it and then they don't get the views they don't get the momentum and they're wondering why well this one step alone is gonna 10x the performance of your videos so you've got to research before you record and let's dive into that a little bit number one you know use the uh, YouTube search bar when you type into that search bar it's gonna prompt you with other search terms these are searches that other people are making based off the, the the first letters or the first word and different phrases that people are looking for I use this to my advantage so that I know you know what topics to make videos on Next, I actually dive into the results. I see what videos are showing up. I'm looking at what thumbnails, what their titles. Um, uh, I'm looking at the uh, vidIQ tool to the right. See, this is another reason why vidIQ is amazing because it pops up automatically on all these searches. Then I actually dive into the video itself. I'm looking at uh, you know what kind of title they're using. I'm also looking, yes, their tags. With vidIQ, you can actually see their tags, which is amazing because you know you can't see that without a tool like vidIQ and obviously I'm looking at the content so again this is just something that takes a little bit of time we're talking like anywhere from 2 to 20 minutes I, I would uh, uh, lean on the side of do more research than le less research because you really want to set yourself up for success that research is going to tell you what the title should be it's going to tell you what to say based on that title it's going to tell you about you know what type of content there's audiences out there uh, looking for so Rob I, I know that you are the research master obviously there at vidIQ that's a big part of what you guys do what are your thoughts when I talk about research before you record let's start off with a quick super hack here and this isn't even a, a vidIQ uh, tool we were just looking at bolognese rep recipe folks try this whatever your keyword root keyword is Type it into Google, uh, to YouTube, and then simply add one character after it. For example, Bolognese Recipe A, Bolognese Recipe B, and let YouTube auto-suggest hundreds of ideas. You can get so many phenomenal uh, idea generation and a, a list of 50 videos to do just from that one simple tip. But to go into a bit more detail about research, yes, everybody's going to have a passion of some type. Uh, let's say tech, for example, and you might have an interest in iPhone. But if you just do videos about that broad topic, like an unboxing or a review of an iPhone, do you think you're going to rank against big competitors? The answer is probably not. So you always have to dig deeper into that search term depending on the size of your channel. In my personal experience, I was able to build out a tech channel through one simple tutorial, and that was how to record your iPhone screen. If you look on YouTube, you'll probably see lots of crazy thumbnails of me pointing at different recording apps and iPhones because that's what I found was my niche and I was able to become an authority on that so yeah absolutely research 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 is gonna give your audience value 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 to get views 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 Wow it's all repetition yes here. there you go I love it and I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Cooper Cooper Landing for giving us a $50 super chat. That's very generous of you. And wow, you mentioned, you. can't thank you enough for all of your help. And audit would be awesome. I hope we audit your channel. But hopefully, I can actually just jump into it later because that's such a generous gift to us. And just know that all your super chats, you guys, help us make more content, better content for you guys. All right. So you just heard it from Rob. Research is so important. I love that hack, by the way, about Bolognese A, Bolognese B, right? Let YouTube tell you what people are searching for. Let's get into the next part of it. Part two is high quality and high value content. Now, this is not rocket science here. We've talked about this, but it's so important because literally this is the heart and soul of a video. Let's go to uh, the next slide here. What do all these people have in common? We've got Casey Neistat, the poster child for YouTube. We got Cooking with Babish, top left there. He's a cooking channel, I love him. Epic food, uh, you learn tons from him. We got Lisa Koshi, one of the most well-known female comedians on the platform. We got Sean Cannell, the YouTube expert, co-founder of this channel, my wife at the bottom. Uh, uh, her name is Judy, of, it's Judy Time. She's a beauty guru turned mom vlogger and she 
she's got over a billion views. And then we've got Will Smith on bottom right. What do they have all in common when it comes to YouTube? Because I can tell you this one thing for a fact. They all have different strategies for getting views. They have different uh, uh, way, like principles when it comes to uh, uh, you know, uh, optimizing their videos. And they just have different people working with them, different types of teams, some people no team. It's high quality content that's adding some kind of value to people's lives. For example, Lisa Koshi, she's making people laugh. That is the most important thing when it comes to her uploading videos and getting views. We got Cooking with Babish. He's making people hungry with his recipes and his amazing you know, uh, food videos. We got Casey Neistat. I mean, just people aspire to have content like him. He literally created a whole genre, um, niche genre, in daily vlogging. Uh, Sean Cannell, same thing, even though he is teaching people about you know, YouTube, he's an expert at social media and digital marketing, he's still adding value and he thinks high quality content, great lighting, you know, great camera, great editing. He's like, how do I keep you more engaged, interested? My wife, as a beauty guru, that's a very competitive field. Again, always adding as much value, teaching the best techniques, right? Really uh, thinking about like, how do I simplify this so everybody can understand? even Will Smith. And this is my favorite uh, person I want to talk about because just because you're a celebrity, just because you're famous, doesn't guarantee views. I'm telling you, people, uh, famous people, celebrities have come onto this platform and have completely failed. Now, they probably get more views than the average person because they do have people that look up to them and watch their stuff. But you know the thing about Will Smith, he took it to a whole nother level. He did vlog style. He's doing crazy things like jump out of helicopters. Again, epic content that people are interested in, that's entertaining, that's engaging, that isn't wasting people's time. So when I talk about guaranteed views, what I can tell you is literally all the optimization, all the best practices, the perfect title, uh, the, the best tags, you know, uh, promoting on digital, it might get you like a few views, but it's not going to get you tons of views if your content sucks if your content isn't engaging is interesting you know the most valuable thing we have right now in our lives is time because there's so many things pulling us in different directions so rob you being the expert when it comes to optimizing videos it's ironic because i'm sure you can agree and i would love to hear your thoughts when it comes to how important content is um, outside of all the other things that we're going to be talking about yeah, absolutely. I was a video creator long before I made content for vidIQ and the, I think there are four things that I learned uh, as I was building a channel and this is bigger, better, faster, different. You can use all four of those or you can focus on one. For example, we've been talking about bolognese recipes. Let's say a, a video does five best bolognese recipes. Well. Hell, I'm going to do 20, I'm going to do 25, I'm going to do the most bolognese recipes on YouTube and create the complete guide. Or better, I think every video creator goes through this journey, whether it's upgrading their camera, getting new lights. I mean, Benji, for this live stream, uh, you helped me to use vMix, so I've learned how to use a new live streaming program, it, like, aiming to get that 1% better with every single video. So who knows, when we're back on vidIQ, I may use uh, this uh, live streaming program. Faster, I think, is really important for video creators who are following trending topics because that allows you to perhaps not make the best quality content in terms of lighting and cameras and production and scripting. But if you can be first, YouTube is going to favor you because you have that information before anyone else. You're providing the value as the first video on YouTube. And I think once you get more experience as a video creator, you're not in that um, survival state and you just you know you bolt upright in front of a camera and you're nervous and whatnot but as you create more and more content through the quantity of the videos that you're making you start to develop a unique selling point like Casey Neistat for example Will Smith all of the great video creators you're not only magnetized to their content but you magnetize to them as a personality and what they can bring to you through entertainment or emotion passion and storytelling 
boom, dropping all kinds of bombs. And I'm going to tell you, there is still so much more that we're going to be sharing with you. But if you're loving this content, if you're getting pumped up to create videos, upload to your channel and get those views, get those subscribers and build a life around this thing called YouTube, hit that like button. We always love your engagement. Leave a comment down below, but we're going to get into the third piece of this. And that is this evaluated experience. So what I mean, so first off, we talked about research before you record. So important you know what people are looking for on YouTube. Secondly, gotta have dope content, gotta deliver value, whatever it is, entertaining people, informing people, uh, teaching people, whatever it is, even connection as a vlogger. Third part, evaluated experience. This is a term I just recently learned from Sean, watching him go live. And uh, there's different ways to say it. Even Rob has a different way of explaining it. But basically, when you upload your videos, that that's not the end. What you need to do is once that video goes live, you need to use tools like vidIQ, dive into your analytics and see what is working and what's not. So what tags are you ranking for? Uh, how, what's the audience retention? How much of your video are people watching? That is so important because if you do this last step and the first two, and you do this over and over, you get incrementally better. Little by little, you're gonna start improving just like Rob said, and you'll one day master this. You know, one thing people forget is, I've been doing this for 10 years. My first video was not like this. I wasn't using vMix, I wasn't using vidIQ. I was figuring things out, whatever, right? Same thing with Sean, you, see, you should see his first video. He literally says, uh, don't expect to be entertained uh, or educated <laughs> or informed. He's like, I'm not, it's not gonna be exciting, for me, I look at that video and I see where he's at. And it, 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 it makes me laugh because little by little, he was improving. But I'd say this is the one thing I learned from Sean more than anybody is this evaluated experience, looking at your own analytics and adjusting little by little your strategy. Because remember, YouTube is ever evolving and this is exactly why I have a Rob on here from vidIQ because, you know, it's. It's one thing to dive into your analytics, but it can be confusing, especially with the YouTube beta studio, which is so brand new. When you have something like vidIQ, it makes it so, so simple. In fact, you know what I want to do here? I actually want to show you guys what I'm talking about here and how easy it is. So let's actually dive into this real quick. A uh, little shout out for vidIQ right there. Uh, that's uh, Rob uh, looking hey, all handsome. Hey, that's me though, wow. Yep. And uh, let me let me show you guys how easy this is, okay? Let's type in bolognese sauce, okay? Which I actually made a video for, I'm gonna uh, upload it. Again, look at how easy vidIQ is. It's showing me all this information to the right. Uh, I can do some quick uh, research on this topic. Uh, right when I click on it, as I showed you earlier, again, vidIQ is going to pop up, right? I know what tags that Jamie Oliver is using, which is awesome. I know what tags he's ranking for. So what's cool about this is you can also do this for yourself uh, in your own videos. And we, when you dive into that actual back end, vidIQ is still with you. There's a checklist when you upload. This is why I love this tool and we're going to dive into it but before we deep dive into it you guys hit that like button let me know in the comments where you guys are watching from and um, rob why don't you share with us how important this evaluated experience is when it comes to this three uh, step process for guaranteed views so everybody watching right now will understand the struggles of a video creator especially when they start a new channel you spend hours creating what you think is a masterpiece and then it gets 10 views. And you do this 20, 50, 100 times. But there's always gonna be one or two videos within your catalog that maybe gets three times as many views or five times as many views as your other content. And I call this the path of least resistance because the common mistake that a lot of video creators do is they create content that people watch and they don't analyze the fact that that was one of their best performing videos and then say to themselves, hang on, that video did really well. Is there another way I can approach this topic? Can I attack it from many different angles? I know my subscribers may think that I'm looking at the same content over and over again, but there's a whole YouTube audience there who are just waiting for similar content because YouTube fed it out to more people than usual. 
So I always say, once you have, you've been hustling, you found one or two videos that really work, and we call it the evaluated experience, and we, we call it the double down um, strategy. Make more videos on that content, whatever angle you can think of, and become the authority. Uh, back to my example of how to record an iPhone video. You may think there may be one or two videos on that topic. I ended up making around about 200 to 300 videos on that topic, and YouTube loved me for that. Whenever I made a video on that topic, I ranked at the very top of the search terms, and people still watch the content. So that's how powerful it is, just doing a simple thing of seeing what's working on your channel, and then repeating that success. Boom, again, wisdom bombs. Boom, and boom, boom, boom. That's just the beginning, you guys. There is so much more that you're about to learn from Rob. We're gonna try to jump right into it. But again, if you guys are loving this content, hit that like button. I'm reading all your comments in the chat area. Uh, I want to say a shout out to Hi I Am Katharina said, I'm totally new to YouTube. Your videos are super helpful. Uh, Marley says, thumbs up already uh, watching from Germany. Thank you. Maxim, The Things, Awesome, Three E's. You guys, you are what makes all this worth it for me and Sean. You, you giving us feedback and telling us that you're learning and acting on that and executing and getting results. This stuff works. I've been doing this for a decade of my life. That's like a third of how long I've been on this planet. And I've seen everything. I mean, I've just seen so much when it comes to this platform. So when I teach you this stuff, it's because it works not just for me and Sean or Rob, it works for so many other creators, if not everybody. And so one thing I want to uh, uh, disclose before we get into Rob deep diving into vidIQ, is this we talk about researching uh you know uh, content and uh, you know the how to's and the tutorials and info this even works for channels like casey neistat let me explain to you when casey neistat first started he wasn't just a daily vlogger he did videos about trending topics so he would do a a, a video like a vlog type of video on his perspective of trending topics. Uh, Rob, I don't know if you remember, he did the uh, the black market iPhone videos, right? And I wouldn't be yeah, the vid Yeah, go ahead. The, I was just going to say the video I discovered Casey Neistat from was when there was a huge snowstorm in New York mm -hmm, and he mm -hmm. um, skied around um, um, Times Square and that's yep. how I discovered him. So it was a very trending news story. Yep, yep. So, you know, Casey Neistat used trending topics to create videos around and I remember that video as well, to uh, get his foot in the door. So this works for everybody. But without further ado, I just want to round out everything we just talked about. So we talk about number one, which is research before you record. It's super important because you need to know what people are looking for on this platform. Next, uh, you want to make sure your videos are high quality. And when I say high quality, not just the lighting, I'm talking about like high quality things that people want to watch when they're sitting on the bus uh, going home or sitting at home and deciding should I do TV or should I do YouTube. Give them content that's going to um, make them interested in watching your videos versus other videos, right? And lastly, evaluated experience and that's what we're going to jump into right now without further ado i'm going to hand it off to rob you guys this is a part where you need to pay attention the most because we've never done this on this channel in this way sean has talked about about vidIQ and deep dive uh, in terms of like how he uses uh, the uh, tools i talk about it all the time i share with you almost every single week how i use the analytics that brings up so simply in the youtube view page but rob is going to be sharing the advanced stuff this is the stuff that is game changer and i do have one disclosure you can get vidIQ completely free we have the link below and it's super useful in fact if i could not afford the upgraded uh is it boost rob is it boost correct yeah right? boost. if Pro i couldn't boost. get that i would just use a free one and it'd be fine but what rob is going to be talking about is the advanced one and it does cost money but it's so worth it if you want to go faster and further with your youtube channel if you want to really maximize your views and exponentially grow uh, your journey here on this platform i'm telling you vidIQ is where it's at so rob 
I'm going to hand it off to you. Uh, I'm going to be learning. I'm going to be taking notes. And I hope everybody else is too. And uh, we're going to get into it. All right. Thank you very much, Benji. I should add as well that before uh, being a video content creator for vidIQ, I had my own channel and I used vidIQ to help grow my channel. A very quick short story here is when I wanted to start sharing what I'd learned about um, growing on it as a YouTube channel, one of the tutorials I did was about vidIQ. And from that video on my channel, the CEO at vidIQ contacted me and said, do you want to do some more tutorials for vidIQ? And it's like, awesome. So that's how I got into uh, helping people use vidIQ every day. So I appreciate the struggles uh, that you have. And I was using vidIQ long before they ever uh, paid me to uh, help promote their tools. So what I'm going to show you here is two main tools that we have here at vidIQ. We have dozens, if not hundreds of tools at this point on our suite, but we want to look at the research side of things and the evaluated experience that Benji and I have already talked about. So if we do a search on YouTube, you'll see a screen like this if you have the Chrome extension installed. And some of these aspects are free. Uh, it might be a little limited on the free version, but you should still, a lot, still see a lot of this information. And I've done a very simple search here for chocolate cake. Very broad topic, lots of people searching for it. And this is where you can start to see how vidIQ can maybe inform you to make better research decisions. Very simple one to begin with. If we look at the size of the channels here, this one at the top, 300,000, one here with 30 million subscribers, you may be starting to ask yourself already, wow, those are big channels. Can I really compete with them by just doing a video solely about chocolate cake? Perhaps not. On the right hand side here, we've also got some numbers as well. And an important one here is the average age. So again, chocolate cake is a search term, very well established. It's not really a trending topic. All of these videos have been on YouTube for a long period of time. Can you break into that market? Again, it's gonna be a tough sell perhaps. We have down here the keyword score. This is probably the thing to look at first. It's like your snapshot of vidIQ telling you, is this search term worth pursuing. Volume versus competition or demand versus supply. And what you always want as a video creator is more demand for a search term versus videos that are available. And that might represent a window of opportunity. So this is a very broad term. Let's go into a little more detail now and Let's put ourselves in, I'm almost going to be a method actor for a second here. I am a tech channel and I am interested in Windows updates, program software. And if I do a search for Windows 10 update, and now you have to sort of visualize how can I make this work for my channel, whether it's about beauty, politics, gaming, what are the keywords and what am I passionate about and what should I be searching for? As you could already see here with Windows 10 update, it's a recent program, it's current, the keyword score changes dramatically. High search volume, but less competition. So that's vidIQ telling you, yeah, there might be an opportunity here for you to make content on Windows 10 updates and potentially rank. Another thing that's really interesting here, uh, Benji, this is something that I always love to find on search terms, is when you look at a channel and you see they have mm -hmm. 9,000 subscribers, so yep. medium-sized channel, but they have 13,000 views after six days. And that tells me, wow, this is a recent video that's already got more views than subscribers. And that tells me, that's my light bulb moment. That's, mm -hmm. ah, so, this, so is a, yeah, this is I, somewhere me, where I... Yeah, Let me jump in here because I think this is so important for people to realize that uh, research sometimes can be boring. But what I love about this tool, it makes it so quick, right? I mean, for me to know how many subscribers that channel has, normally I have to click into that person's video and you know, you yeah. probably would see it, but it, it shows it right there. Another cool thing too, Rob, this is like totally off topic, but for engagement purposes, this is awesome. Of course, we have tons of comments on our channel and I appreciate everybody leaves a comment. It doesn't matter to me who does, especially when it's somebody supporting us. But even in the comments area, you guys, you can see how many subscribers 
subscribers they have. So you can kind of see like yeah. who are the people that are really serious checking out my channel, and it helps you kind of sift through, you know, what channels maybe you want might want to go visit first in terms of like collaborating with or reaching out to. So uh, VidIQ goes so much farther than just the analytics that we're talking about. It is a practical tool that cuts down and how much time it takes to do this thing called YouTube, even for engagement. Yeah, and we we even have this little like Rotten Tomatoes ranking as well. Like you can see the number here, ninety six percent. I can mouse over that and then get a, an indication of like how many people like a video instantly. And so yeah, there's all these all of these little things when you dig into different pages on YouTube that VidIQ just picks all that information out of the background and puts it front and center. So we were looking at this video down here with more views and subscribers, and I picked up another keyword here, which I think might be interesting, 19H1. Now, again, this probably doesn't mean much to me or you, but I, but as a YouTube video creator doing some research, I think that might have potential. So I did another search, and it was simply Windows Update 19H1. And now look at what's at the top of the search rankings, that same video, but just below it, another channel with even less subscribers and even more views, 28,000 views. And what that might indicate here is that this video was published two weeks ago versus the top one six days ago. So the more recent video has hit the top of the search rankings. This one's dropped down a little bit. And the reason why that might be the case is what we also do is unearth all of the tags from a video. And that's where you see all of these words here, Windows 10, Windows 10 update and you can see how this video creator has used really specific keywords to be really descriptive and help YouTube understand what their content is about. We know tags are being less and less important, but I think this is an indication here, Benji. I mean, you may have a different opinion, but I think this is an indication here that tags may still be relevant, even <laughs> if YouTube says that they're not too important. I think for smaller channels, uh, trying to categorize their content as much as possible. I still think there's value there. You know, I, I this is what I want to say about tags. The thing is, there's a lot of debate on if tags are important. I will tell you this, yeah. title is the most important, right? The reason I still want to use tags is because I like using tags along with the vidIQ tool to see where my video is ranking. Does that make sense, Rob? Because it, yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. And, and you can see other people's uh, videos as well. So again, it's like, you know, it, the thing about YouTube and uh, the algorithm and the artificial intelligence now that's behind it, it's too difficult for any one human to figure it out 24 seven all the time. You, and so using tags just lets you have something to lean on to research, but it's debatable. The, the other thing I wanted to mention is a, a great comment uh, uh, for you, Rob. Uh, Swan Christopher Williams says, this is the most amazing information anyone can receive when it comes to helping you grow faster and further. Thanks, video influencers. And a shout out to Adrian, Sparks Family TV. <clears throat> That's an amazing compliment. And I agree. Thank this you, is really stuff, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, this is stuff that I, I've been so excited to have Rob on here because I can teach you this all day, but it's not gonna be at the same level of depth. And you have yet to see some of the really advanced stuff that is just gonna hit you like a, a, a freight train. And remember, anybody that's uh, giving super chats will be prioritized for a channel audit. I think that, uh, what's his name? Um, Cooper Landing Fishing Guide is probably gonna be the first one. So if you leave a super chat, we're gonna be uh, looking through you guys and <clears throat> auditing two channels. So hang on in there. I know this is a lot of information, but I'm telling you, this is so worth your time if you're serious about getting those guaranteed views for your videos, getting more subscribers, and building a business on YouTube. So Rob, keep it going, man. I love this. Yeah, one last thing I was gonna say with tags. Are they important? That's a debate, but bit of a vidIQ hack here. You can see a little pay-per-click icon there. I can just copy all of these tags and then selectively use the ones I want in my videos. So that's like a two, three minute job rather than having to type them all out as well. So a little uh, shortcut there. One last thing I wanted to show you about research here, and this is going even into more detail. So bear with me here. Imagine uh, you're a gamer. And I'm sure even if you're not interested in video games, you've heard of Fortnite because that's pretty much half of YouTube these days. There is a new competitor coming out in the gaming market called Apex Legends. 
And when video gamers want to play a game, they want the best performance. And that's usually done through getting a smooth experience or what video gamers like to call frames per second or best settings. And so I did a little bit of a, di a deep dive into this particular keyword because it brought out a really fascinating result. So the search term is Apex Legends FPS Boost. I know that's very jargon heavy. But just look at if you, and again, try and visualize this in your own genre. You should know the sort of important keywords, jargon that people are searching for to a certain extent. Now look at the keyword score here. It's through the roof again. Competition is low. And then Benji, this is one of these magical videos here that I find. Channel with 1,000 subscribers. Made a video a month ago, 70,000 views. So that's like 70 times their subscriber base. It's clearly been shared across YouTube. And with it being a new game, if that game is successful, that video could be there for what? six months, 12 months, it could be what I call a f flagship video for that channel and drive so many views and subscribers. Yeah, I love that you shared that, Rob, because so many people lose hope because they don't have very many subscribers. But that example you just shared there is not unique. Yeah. There is that happening all over the place, even here on Video Influencers. Why that third piece, um, the evaluate, evaluated experience and just repetition after that is so important. <clears throat> Sean and I have a handful of videos that have done multiple hundreds of thousands of views, if not up to a million views. We have a couple that are more than a million views and it's with this process this strategy of researching and checking out uh, are there niches not being served are there other channels that are dominating <clears throat> the last thing i want to mention is make sure you guys remember that you never know when the algorithm is going to pick up your content and this is why having high quality content is so important i bet if you go into this video this video um, anybody that's interested in that topic, Rob, uh, and I haven't seen it, but you'll have to tell me, I bet is watching a lot of that video, if not most of it, if not all yeah. of it. And because of that, because um, people are searching it, uh, it got picked up by the algorithm, it's being served to a lot of people's search queries, and it's getting tons of views. And this is why at the end of the day, you need to put up a lot of videos, obviously get better, evaluated experience, repetition, improving, uh, getting, you know, like that quality up higher and higher and higher and doing that research every single time. But you just never know. I've seen channels that just literally their whole career, their whole channel, their whole business um, just explodes from one video but you never know when that might be. It might be your 10th video, might be your 100th video, might be your 1,000th video, but man, after that, things can change a ton for you, um, especially if you follow that up with more uploads. All right, sorry, Rob. I was just thinking, what's the phrase? Um, overnight success takes uh, 10 years. I guess it, it, if you put that into YouTube context, overnight success can take 50 videos. But you're doing all of that work in the background and then all of a sudden you get a video that pops. Right, one last thing I wanted to look at um, before we look at a new tool, but we are touching on evaluated experience here, is if you look at the um, Apex Legends video that we have here, which has done really well, what we talked about was doubling down on your best content. And I had a look at if uh, this video creator did that. And let's have a look at their channel. We find this video with 70,000 views, did really well. And before that, they did, they did another video that got 3,000 views. And again, a good amount of views for a channel with 1,000 subscribers. But look what they did next. Something about, it looks like a maybe a fan and then something about a graphics card and then another one here which did a little bit better but can you see how the views are fluctuating now we're down back into the hundreds of the low thousands i almost guarantee if this video creator focused on this topic for maybe 10 to 15 videos they could have built up a huge arsenal of videos that would dominate those search rankings so that's what we talk about when we are uh, evaluating uh, our videos but we're going to touch on that a lot more in a few moments one last thing I want to show you in the research area. If I click the enable inline keywords that we've already looked at, it shows you all of the tags for videos, uh, which uh, a video creator is using. 
Another thing that you can do is actually click on that tag and it launches what's called our keyword inspector. And this allows you to do like a keyword universe quick search. So it's given us all of the related keywords for this very specific keyword like maybe what you could look at next so we've got here increased frames per second but there might be best settings that you could look at as well as a keyword and then we'd have down here the trending timeline of a keyword and as a video game that got released in the last couple of months we can see that it really spiked up here that's probably when that video creator made that video and now it's tailing off a little bit so is the window of opportunity still there we're getting all of this information and we're trying to join all of the dots there to help us and then now one last thing i want to show you here benji we're looking at a really trending topic here but of course everybody should be looking at what's called tent pole events so i'm just going to do a search for uh, one of our favorite holidays which is uh, Valentine's and something that's really funny here with the trending content is you always get that spike and you can guarantee that this is going to happen every single year that at some point maybe February 10th 11th you have that spiking demand for this keyword so whether you're a beauty channel you're a makeup uh, a baking channel or um, a family vlog channel how can you incorporate these temple events into your content Boom. So, by the way, I know like my head is kind of spinning a little bit, but I'm definitely paying attention, taking yeah. notes. I'm telling you, this is the stuff that will change everything for you. That example alone about the Apex uh, video, con uh, the gaming content and following that strategy uh, or following it up with that strategy. Uh, We've done it on this channel. I know Sean has done it. I've seen other channels do it. And literally, everything can change for you. I want to give a shout out to Fish and Dive Hawaii. Thanks for all your help, Rob. Uh, you audited my channel last year when I started my channel, and now I have over 3,500 subscribers. So awesome. awesome. Uh, Fish Good and Dive uh, Hawaii. And again, if you guys are giving uh, super chats, you'll be prioritized to be that um, other channel to get audited. I know you guys are excited about it. So real quick, vidIQ is a tool that I've been using for a very long time, even before we started working with them. Now they sponsor this channel. vidIQ it was being used by Rob before he started working with them. Same thing with Sean. I actually learned about vidIQ from him. If you guys want to check it out, you, ha you aren't using it, go down below into the info box. We do have a link for a vidIQ. Uh, and I think you'll get like a 30-day free trial or something like that. But definitely, it's worth it to get the upgraded version. It costs a little bit of money, but that's an investment into you going further faster with this tool and like I said even the free version just getting all these analytics so we're transitioning now again to some heavy stuff and I know some people are maybe gonna jump off but those of you that stay I can guarantee you this if you apply the things that Rob is teaching which by the way I'm learning as you're learning it will change things for your videos it will guarantee views as long as you have that dope content and you're doing that research and you're uh, evaluating your results so rob i'm gonna uh, hand it back off to you again uh, but any comments uh any uh, shout outs just uh feel free to do so yeah i just seen a comment here from design medium who said smart work hard work and I think that's uh, smart work over hard work and you're absolutely right when you're using the information at hand you can get so much further without having to hustle and uh, almost like work blindfolded okay so I have a question for everybody here watching this and Benji here as well included uh, let's imagine that you wanted to get some personalized help for your channel and you wanted to maybe speak to a, a YouTube consultant and maybe you were going to get an hour's worth of their time. How much do you think such a thing might cost? Any ideas uh, from anybody? What do you think, Benji? How, how much might you expect to pay to uh, talk to a YouTube expert, so to speak? YouTube expert? I, I don't know. I think that it depends on h how much of an expert, right? Are you somebody that just <laughs> that came true. on to the scene and you've been doing this for a week? and you're like, I want to be a YouTube expert, I don't know, maybe a few hundred dollars. But I can tell you yeah. that there are people that literally get paid thousands of dollars, right? Up to five Absolutely, figures. Yeah. Five figures, you guys, $10,000 to get an audit Oof. on their channel and to help them. And, you know, that's like consultant level uh, type of advice. But the range is huge. And typically, not always, the more you pay, the better you get. But one thing I'm so proud of, Sean and I do it right here 
for you guys for free. Now, we don't always focus on your channel individually, but what we're teaching you are the things that I would teach in my consultations, right? When I deep dive and coach people on their individual channels. Same thing with Rob. Just a little secret, you guys. Anytime us uh, YouTube secrets, YouTube secrets, that's a selfish plug for my book, which by the way is uh, available on audiobook now. No, whenever us YouTube experts get together, what's so interesting is a lot of the questions we get, a lot of the advice we give, oftentimes I'd say like 60, 70% is always the same. But we cater yeah, to so their right type that. of channel, their type of content. 30% might be something ninja or different, but you know, these basic principles, that's why these three steps, the research, great content and evaluated experience, it is that simple. Like YouTube is not like this crazy weird platform that's super mysterious and secretive. They put it all out there. What they put in the YouTube creator blog, that stuff works. And I've talked to people that work at YouTube that agree with this. Is that the right answer? Because that was like loaded uh, uh, question. <laughs> yeah, so the reason I ask this question is because, yeah, you would expect to maybe pay three figures. Well, at vidIQ, we have a tool which we think is one of the most powerful video mm. marketing tools uh, anywhere. And it is called the channel audit. And the good news is you don't just get an hour of its time. It is working 24 seven for your channel. And the best news is some of the things you're going to see here. Well, the, the program to use is free, but it does limit you. But even if you're using a free version of vidIQ, you can get some of this information. So folks, get ready here. Your mind might be a bit blown here if you've <laughs> never clicked on this, if you have vidIQ. And I'm always a little hesitant to click it because I'm not sure what it's going to give. And basically, it's going to audit the vidIQ channel right now. Mm -hmm. So when I click on it, it does this. Now, yeah, there's quite a lot of information there, but I can scroll down and there's still quite a lot of information and I can continue to scroll down and there is even more information. This is all about your channel. It is a report card and it updates uh, whenever the YouTube analytics updates. So it's usually every 24 hours and it gives you so much awesome information all at your fingertips. I often check this out at least once a day. If we try to break it down a little bit, obviously you've got the, the snapshot at the top here and I'm relieved to see that for once we are in the green. Our views are up 100%, which is brilliant to see. Watch time up 70%. That's all fascinating. But it's when you get into the double down section and Benji's been uh, calling this the, the evaluated experience. This is where you can learn so much about what videos work specifically for your channel. For example, views per hour. This is the velocity of your videos right now. Which ones are getting views? And it may be telling you if this video is getting a lot of views now, you should make follow up content as soon as possible. At the moment, we're having incredible success with a particular topic. You may have heard about it. This is the <laughs> subscriber race PewDiePie versus T-Series. Uh, I, I don't know how we've done this ourselves, Benji, but we've got a video here running right now, 10,000 views per hour, wow. which is unbelievable. That's yep. probably one of the best videos we've ever had on our channel. But look at what we've done below that as well. More content on that same topic, all getting hundreds of views per hour because we practice what we preach. Uh, to begin with, we did this video on PewDiePie versus T-Series as an experiment and we looked at it from a data point of view. But YouTube said, this is awesome content. We want to see more of it. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to follow our own rules and double down, which is exactly what we did. And you can see from the view counts here, hundreds of thousands of views. However, this is something that's really interesting. Although these videos are giving us a lot of exposure, are they giving as much value to the audience? And the question and the answer is potentially not. Because if you look at this column here, subscribers gained, this is where you're building trust with your audience. So you're offering something so valuable during a video that that's causing the viewer to click on that subscribe button because they have value from this video and perceived value from future videos. And you can see how different it is. We've got PewDiePie stuff here, but what, I, what is our bread and butter is helping channels get more views and subscribers, helping with monetization questions. So look at the difference here. We've got views here, uh, subscribers from those points of view. And then we've got all of these analytics spread out, 10 different categories, like the videos with the most average watch time, videos here getting playlists, and another one here. I mean, Benji, I'm sure you'll um, uh, subscribe to this idea that you get 
most of your views from suggested mm -hmm. videos, always appearing on the right hand side, um, getting those videos to push viewers to your content. And again, we're joining the dots. More PewDiePie stuff here, telling us to make more content. Now, yeah. the story is coming to an end here, so we're probably done with that yeah. content, but. Let me, we let just, me jump we just, in here. We just let me jump the, in here real quick, yeah, go Rob, ahead. because I think a lot of people um, maybe don't understand the significance, and this is why I love how you started this section about how much would an audit cost, right? Like how much would it cost for an expert to take a look at your channel? This audit tool is something that is, it's literally working for you 24 seven, and it's doing for you what we do for ourselves but it would literally take hours and hours and hours to look at all the different sections in the analytics tool, even with Beta Studio being even more uh, epic when it comes to analytics and giving like even better information. This is just a snapshot. So, the, you know, Rob mentioned he looks at this every single day, maybe multiple times a day. You just like boom, 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 seeing all these things. You can see the relationship between views per hour. That's how many views you're getting on that video per hour all day long to like how many subscribers getting for that same video or other videos and you can start putting together one of the things i tell everybody is the best advice you will get for yourself when it comes to your channel and getting views for your videos and gaining subscribers uh and, and doing this thing called youtube is from your own observation and I've been saying that for years since 2010. I remember my first YouTube expert video, Rob, it's a funny story, was just a video <laughs> that I taped of myself talking for 10 minutes to my best friend in 2010. I unlisted it and I sent it to him. That was my first official YouTube expert video. Before being a YouTube expert was even a thing. And I remember in that video, I was talking about the number one way you conquer this YouTube thing is you go into your analytics and you observe your own results if I had this tool back then I'd probably be like PewDiePie maybe I'd be selling my own gaming <laughs> chairs uh, that are $300 I'd be like having millions of subscribers no I'm wrong I got a million plus subscribers on my vlog channel very happy and content satisfied where I'm at but if there was a tool like this so everybody that is sticking around and watching this and learning from this I'm so glad you are because just this one tool this audit tool alone will change your whole perspective of your channel and I know Rob's going to dive into some other things but just understand these are kind of the ninja level uh, 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 things that people are doing you know I'd say Sean is probably the best YouTuber when it comes to diving into analytics, building a strategy, and knowing what's going to hit. And I constantly see him using vidIQ all day long. In fact, like sometimes I'll be hanging out with him, I'll be looking at what he's doing on the computer. There's all kinds of other tools that I'm, I'm even finding about uh, for the first time from you, Rob, right now that uh, we might not even dive into. So it's totally worth it getting it. And again, this is not pitching vidIQ. We tell people to download it all the time. It's in all our info boxes. We use it as an example of how to do research. This video today is to dive into the advanced tools for those of you that have the boost level. And so if you guys have questions, let us know. Uh, the unboxing show, thank you for your $5 uh, super chat donation. Uh, she says, or I don't know if it's she or he. Hello, I'm a young channel. I started uploading videos at the end of January 2019. Would love a channel audit. So again, your guys' super chat will be prioritized. We're looking forward to diving into a couple of channels, maybe a few channels, and auditing. And so we appreciate uh, you guys being on here. Rob, let's take it home now. Yeah, I was just going to say, you've heard it here first, folks. Benji Travis versus T-Series. That's the next subscriber <laughs> race. All right, then. So what we have so far is what you're doing well at. Everybody want to know. Everybody wants to see their success stories, but YouTube isn't as simple as that because, unfortunately, there's going to be content that you're making that doesn't quite resonate with your audience. So not only do we have content to double down on, we also have content that could use work. These are the videos with the lowest average watch time, lowest retention, lowest views, all the signal signals that YouTube doesn't really want to see with your content. What we learn from this 
this last year is uh, we were doing interviews on our channel, uh, but we found that they just weren't working with the audience for whatever reason. I don't know if it's because I was asking the wrong questions during the interviews, the wrong thumbnails, but we decided that it was so labor intensive and such a cost that we decided to uh, put them to one side and maybe rework them. So that, that was a good example of us removing the content that didn't work. Something we've also learned here is that we shouldn't try and go after very popular, very famous Hollywood actors uh, when we're criticizing their YouTube channels because the audience doesn't like that. Yes, folks, that is a lowest likes ratio of just 16%. So yeah, lessons learned from that one, but it's always interesting to have that information. As well as your success, know how to trim the fat from your channel as well. And also here, we look at the, like, the top search terms, no surprise here. We are getting a lot of traffic from this PewDiePie versus T-Series thing. I bet for that channel that we looked at in the research area, he was getting a lot of search traffic from Apex Legends and Frames Per Second Boost. So again, that would be a good indicator of what we should uh, look at next. And something, a little uh, tidbit here, uh, Benji, I always find this fascinating. People love in engaging with your content and through voting polls. I don't know if anybody ever uses voting polls on their videos, but this is the top tip. Just add a voting poll. Uh, maybe you can address it directly in a video, but there's always people who love voting on your videos. And if you can maybe include that voting poll like two thirds of the way into a video, that might give you a bit more uh, watch time. Or you could ask people to vote on something at the beginning of the video and then give them the result at the end. And how's that for engagement and extending your watch time? So again, all of these little pieces of information that we're grabbing here from YouTube and put in front and center. Couple of things I wanted to look at just at the end here, and this is just looking at your metadata and average metrics. Things like how long should your titles be? Generally speaking, we suggest titles of no more than 60 characters for the simple reason that when you're previewing a video, it gets cut off after like 60 characters. So you may not be able to read the entire title. Description lens should be of a certain size, tag lens, and then also uh, we have its SEO score. So we're looking at how many times you use your keywords in your tags, titles, and descriptions, trying to get as close to 50 as possible. That's a whole other area of the vidIQ system, and that's another free tool. If you ever look at one of the videos on a watch page, we we'll try and rate that. And there is one last thing here, um, Benji, that I want to show you. This is one of my favorite tools here. Uh, items to improve on. Everybody knows that they should include um, what we call interactive cards and end screens so that you can help push viewers to more of your content, increase what's called session watch time so they're watching your videos on almost like a Netflix binge style. And so what you want to do is make sure you have all of these simple tools in your videos. But look what I've done here, Benji. I've accidentally forgot to put one of my videos in a playlist. <laughs> So oh, watch even this. you right. make mistakes, Hopefully this is, huh? <laughs> yeah, even I make, everybody makes mistakes. Now just watch this. I find this fascinating. Okay, so this video has not been added to a playlist. Okay, it tells me instantly. No way to find that other than over through this list. Click on the edit button, takes me to the video edit page, and I can simply click on add to playlist and add it to, I think I want to put it on the YouTube Creator Studio Beginner's Guide, and that took 15 seconds. Can you imagine how long that would take mm -hmm. to do if you had no idea the video wasn't in a playlist? We tell you that and you go and fix it and it's as simple as that. Yeah. I think that's one of my favorite tools there to very quickly fix Oh stuff. yeah, I, I think the speed at which you can work on your channel is incredibly stupid. And that's why it's almost not a very good decision to not a download vidIQ, especially when there's a free version out there. Uh, one thing I want to actually show you, I want to uh, show you a video that I'm going to upload today and the significance of vidIQ in terms of, uh, let's see, let's see, um, actually using vidIQ. So here we go. Um, I'm going to actually turn this one off. Uh, let me see here. So I'm actually going to uh, sh uh, share with you after Rob finishes. But, you know, putting all these pieces together, say you don't have vidIQ, okay? You would need to go into your analytics and you would have to see what got the most views. 
and then you'd have to ask yourself, well, how to get views? So do you have to go into traffic sources? You'd have to see, you know, like in, in the beta studio, it will tell you, you know, like what the watch time is and the audience retention and all that kind of stuff. And then you would have to go look at the tags and see which tags, what search results, what were the suggested videos? Literally all that could take you 20 minutes. You could do that with literally, you saw how many videos was on that audit screen. You can do that with like literally like 30, 40 different videos. And if there's a mistake, you can fix them, you can uh, uh, address them. And that is the power of something like vidIQ. The point I wanna make here, today we did this live broadcast, the guarantee views. This is the level of effort that it takes to guarantee that your videos, when they go upload, that they're going to get traction, that there's going to be traffic going to it, and people are going to watch it. Guaranteed views takes a lot of hard work, but the right hard work. If, if you guys all are working very hard on your videos, eventually something's going to hit as long as you're evaluating your experience and improving. The thing about a tool like this, it just cuts everything down by so much. And I'm gonna show you one other thing. I'm actually gonna show you me uploading my bolognese recipe today. But Rob, I would love for you to take it before we get into Q&A and audit a couple of channels. Yeah, sure. So uh, I showed you there just how uh, quickly and easily uh, you can fix a playlist. And hopefully now you should be able to see on my channel audit that it's updated. So da -da -da -da, I don't have any playlist to fix, but I still have some end screens I need to fix here. Uh, and that's because I keep forgetting to add end screens to my live streams, something I always do every single week. And just one last thing I want to, sh to show you with this report card. There's a lot of information here, but guess what? You can drill down even further. All you need to do is click on view more and now it lists the last, I think it's the last 20 videos and ranks them all in terms of velocity. But it also gives you uh, the um, the list here of like, not only is this video getting 13,000 views per hour, but it's also currently number two in your views and number two in your watch time. And that'd be, and for me, that would be like a big uh, red siren going off saying, make more of this content right now. As soon as you finish this live stream, Rob, go and do something else about PewDiePie versus T-Series because it's almost guaranteed to get thousands of views. So. That is, I, th I think you get uh, like the first five videos in a free version, and then on on this report card you get the first three of every column in a free version. So even if you're not currently on a subscribed service on vidIQ, there is a mountain of information here to dig into. Yeah, and um, I finally uh, got to it, and I want to show you guys what is powerful about this. Okay, so this is the upload page. Rob, you're gonna have to talk through this with me, because I don't know all the different sure. tools. Uh, this is bolognese, uh, it's a horrible thumbnail, I'm gonna change it, but look at this. Is this number from vidIQ right here, the 12 out of 100 for the title? Yeah, this is such a simple thing that YouTube yeah. don't include. They don't include yeah. character limits. Like, so you, crazy. Why so this was crazy, that? you guys. These numbers is telling you what are the character limits. Simple things like this. Uh, you can translate all your text into another language, which opens you up to another, uh, uh, you know, like audience base. This is my favorite part. The checklist right here to the right says at least one card is missing. All the X's are things I need to fix. Look, monetization enabled, the most important thing. Yeah, I've got the money. But everything else, look, make it public, add to a playlist, share on Twitter, share on Facebook, reply to a recent comment. This is what's nuts. It's even telling you uh, when you need to engage with people. And that is the reason why I use it. I appreciate everything that Rob just shared with you. That's why I had him on here. I believe that vidIQ offers some amazing uh, tools and advanced uh, you know, observations and analytics that uh, group it together in a simple manner. But I use it especially just for those basic things. So as I'm uploading, vidIQ is right there in the, in the process and remind me to do some basic things. Now you could easily just have a piece of paper, but what's awesome about vidIQ, it's wired into your channel. So it knows if you've done something or done it. Rather than like say I mark something off on my piece of paper and I didn't actually do it and I don't ever address it and it just goes up to the world. Well, not only in the uh, upload page, but as you saw Rob's 
uh, you know, back end advanced stuff, right? The audit tool, it'll tell you there. And there's so many things like even you can add tags as you're watching your own video. You can add a tag to your video. It's going to suggest some advanced tags, all that kind of stuff. So thank you so much, Rob. I want to get into uh, the Q&A, but if you're watching this and you're just joining and you're hanging on, waiting for these audits, hit that like button and let us know where you're watching from and what questions you have for both Rob and I because we'll be answering as we go. I um, want to uh, say we're going to jump into the Q&A real quick, but I uh, want to say thank you to Adrian again for the super chat. And man, let's jump right into it. Do you want me to ask you some questions or do you want to find a channel? I think like the channel we should do is that, uh, that here, let me actually find it for you and uh, tell you about it. Let's um, go into it. So again, hit that like button, leave a comment below, ask us your questions because even after this broadcast, we oftentimes go into the comments area and answer as many questions. If you guys are new to vidIQ, definitely download it, but go to their YouTube channel as well. Tons of great content. If you wanna learn about PewDiePie versus T-Series, <laughs> that's a place to go, but there's just so much more. And uh, Rob, I'm gonna let you take it as I, find a couple questions and find those uh, things on your last thoughts for people maybe leave a little inspiration motivation uh, some stories that wraps everything you're talking about um, up yeah so what you've seen today uh, from vidIQ are just two tools and I like to think of those as some of the power tools that we have but You've probably only seen maybe 20 to 30 percent of the whole tool set that we have is pretty much on any YouTube screen you will find tools from us that will help you. Uh, and as Benji says, a lot of it is just making a 10 minute job into a 10 second job. It just helps everything. Uh, another really good tool that we have, which I use every day, is comment templates. We get hundreds if not thousands of comments a day and you can't seriously respond to all of them. So we create this little template which has these automated responses in when you just want to say thanks for watching or really appreciated it, thanks for the like and you can reply to so many comments through that as well as looking the looking at the other comments uh, that you want to give a more for a response to. Uh, and yeah, as I say, vidIQ has literally transformed my life. Before I used vidIQ, I was a hobbyist YouTuber. And now thanks not only to the tool, but being given the opportunity to share my knowledge in how I use vidIQ, it's now my full-time job. This is my career. And I know this is cliched, but when I, I made my first YouTube video, or any video, because I wasn't really into video creating before YouTube. I made my first video in 2012, and by the end of 2017, I was working within the YouTube uh, ecosphere, so to speak. So if that's not motivation for you folks <laughs> out there uh, to achieve what you want to achieve uh, f by spreading a message of value that you will have, uh, it's just finding a way to help YouTube share that message, uh, then I don't know what, what else can, I can suggest. But it does take time. Patience is, is so important when, uh, when you start a YouTube channel. It's almost oh. like running a business, I, I tend to Inspiring. see. Inspiring. I'm motivated. I'm pumped up by this story. Thank you so much, Rob. And just so you know, um, Rob and I, we've only met a few different times, some, a couple different events. He attended one of my uh, talks. But I know Rob knows what he's talking about, but it comes from a lot of work, a lot of history. But that's why I'm so glad that he's on here because you're gaining that wisdom that he gained from years of experience, tons of uploads. So um, the first channel we're going to audit is Cooper Landings Fishing Guide. That's right, sir. We are gonna uh, look at your channel first because you did give us a $50 super chat. Um, and I can tell already you are a channel about uh, fishing, right? And you have, it looks like, a pr let me actually uh, play this video. Um, one week ago, trout spay fishing, three keys to success in spay fishing. I already like your uh, your title. Uh, you know, I haven't done any research, but um, I'm I'm looking through your video right now. In fact, Tara, can I make it bigger? Does that show? Oh wow, look at that! So I'm learning all kinds of new stuff with VMix, but uh, I'm looking through your video. I'm imagining you're talking and uh you're teaching about three keys to success in spay fishing 
I'm not sure how how big of an editor you are, but my number one advice, especially since this video was just uploaded, is um, especially in the beginning. I don't know if you are um, putting up this video and uh, not putting any text or a lot of visuals based on what you've seen other fishing channels do or not do. I'm not a big fisher min person i don't fish at all but if i was gonna start fishing and i want to learn the three keys to success i i'd want some visuals this is just me personally right i want some uh some text maybe that enhances what you're talking about i i couldn't hear what you were talking about uh so i can't really uh critique that or audit that but i can tell you that um, you know, more visuals are better. You're editing, you know, having different shots, especially considering whatever it is that you're talking about. Um, that's my real quick just viewpoint into the, the first video I saw on your homepage. Uh, Rob, are you taking a look at his channel, uh, the fishing channel? Yeah, I have it up on screen as well. Right. And um, some of the things I noticed, if I just mm -hmm. switch to, to the screen there, uh, so I sort of buy the most popular videos and there's one here which seems to be a little bit of a breakout one, how to tie a deadly trout spray f uh, swinging fly. Uh, again, I personally don't know anything about the uh, fishing area, but it looks as if your key root, your root keyword is trout spay f swinging, trout spay fishing potentially. And when I look at some of your more popular videos, look at how they all start, trout spay fishing. That seems to be your root keyword in all of your videos and you seem to be using it a lot but oh and now I've also noticed this as well the three three out of the top four videos start with how to do something with trout spay fly I don't know if you've done more videos on that topic but it almost feels like you could build out a series of maybe 20 to 50 videos on that particular topic and become the dominant force on YouTube I like the thumbnails. I think they're, uh, a lot of times they can be a little muddy or a little too complicated with fishing channels and outdoor channels, but I like the fact that you're taking a really detailed shot of your um, whatever it is you're focusing on. The text sometimes is maybe a little too small and maybe you don't need it in the thumbnail. For example, this one here, how to tie an easy trout fly. You've just re you're just repeating what you say in the title, so there's always that question of, do you need to do that? Perhaps not. It might be more effective if you had an arrow pointing at a certain point of the object, potentially. But I think sometimes, Benji, this is all like very subjective mm -hmm. opinions yeah. from different video creators. It, uh, overall, I think there's many solid foundations yes. here for yes. any outdoor channel that they could uh, use for building a fishing channel. I agree. And so um, on that note, um, I, Cooper, I'm guessing Cooper Landing. I hope that's your name, uh, Cooper. Well, that's what I'm going to call you. I think you're, you've got a great start. You get it, right? The thumbnails have to be you know, self-explanatory. Yeah. Uh, I love that the pictures are close up to the thing that you're talking about. And yes, uh, Rob mentioned, like if you're gonna add text, make it readable. So one little tip here, not just for you, for everybody. You know, I'm on a desktop computer. I got this old thing called a keyboard, right? And I've got this huge monitor. I'm sure Rob has a monitor. When you're editing beautiful thumbnails, it looks awesome on your screen. And you've got text on there. You've got like maybe a little detail and like a logo and emoji and all this kind of stuff. But remember at the end of the day, a majority of people are gonna be watching it on this thing called a phone and that thumbnail gets so small and in fact when uh, Rob and I are looking at channel Cooper the thumbnail might even be smaller on our screen depending on like how it's formed or whatever so just keep that in mind if you're gonna put text you have to be able to put it up to your phone and be able to read it as a small thumbnail if not then it's not even worth putting up on there the second thing I'd say Cooper about your channel I'm impressed with your channel because it, it seems you're only 24 videos in. Rob, I don't know if you saw that or not. Not that many oh, videos. Oh, I didn't see that, that's right? incredible. Wow, uh, yeah, so that's even you, better. If you're starting like this, you're, you're gonna have yeah, a, absolutely. a great road ahead of you, but just remember, like, it, when you get to 100, 
hit us up again because I would love to audit you then, but I have a feeling you won't need to because you're already doing a lot of the best practices. Obviously there's always room for improvement, but you gotta have a hundred videos because of that, what is that? That third step in our three simple step process, which is evaluated experience. The first 24, you learned a lot, I'm sure. You're gonna learn a lot more for the next 24 and then the next 24 and that's when you have exponential growth because ultimately what gets better when you have evaluated experience is content what what your last thoughts rob before i move on and pick the uh, next channel yeah i i i didn't even look at how old the channel was so i'm absolutely stunned at the progress so far and sometimes when we do live streams we're trying to evaluate at what size the channel's actually operating at and i would By expect way, this sort of it's on, your, uh, uh, thumbnails. it's on your screen still rob let's just there switch over so everybody what, wants so to see your beautiful face we, that's what i'm telling you <laughs> hey everyone so we're, um, we're, when we evaluate a channel, we, I would look at this. This is a channel that's already operating at maybe 10,000 subscribers in terms of the content and the thumbnails. So yeah, Cooper, you're already on to a, a fantastic thing here. And just keep it up. Just the few tweaks that here and there, that improving 1%, whether it's the thumbnails or as Benji said, like editing the videos a little tighter. And yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if in six months you hit 10,000 subscribers, if not before. Boom. Okay, so I'm going to be looking at another channel here. And uh, again, leave your comments. This will probably be the last one. Um, I'll definitely still look at some of these other channels after the broadcast. But this is the longest we've gone live. Um, but it's good stuff. If you're sticking with it and you're watching it, or maybe you're watching the uh, the uh, the evergreen video of this, this is very valuable stuff, and I'm loving this. We've never audited channels like this, Rob, so I'm excited to have you on here. And the last one is here. I will um, uh, try to look for it. He unboxing show. Let's if you don't, see. if you don't mind, a quick um, plug here for VidIQ, Benji. Oh yeah, we do hey, this definitely. Sort of how about this? You talk about VidIQ plug your channel, yeah. all that good stuff while I look for um, the next channel. So um, we do this type of thing every single Tuesday on vidIQ. We do a live stream where we take as many channels as we can and do audits just like this. 